Hello and welcome to another double feature, the Internet Movie Review Show where a horror whore and an anime addict swap films to persuade one another about our respective genres. Do you know, I think that introductions get better. <laughs> like it's it, better every time. Yeah, so. it's, it's just get better and better, what can I say? <laughs> huh. uh, so this week, I gave Alan... Yeah, this week, Mike gave to me The Innocence, the 1961. <laughs> we're about to make, we're about to oh, do battle. Oh, oh. Well, yeah, you got it, mate. Okay, sorry. Just the cuffs. Uh, yeah, Mike gave me the 1961 classic horror, The Innocence, uh, directed by Jack Clayton. As, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did Google. Yes. <laughs> he checked it just before. Yeah, just to be in the safe side. But the, the film stars Deborah Kerr as a young woman in 19th century England who is recruited to act as governess for a pair of young children whose parents have died and they've been left in the care of their uncle who, while he's a reasonable man, really has no place in his life for them. So he wants the, the, gover the kids the governess to take to do with everything for them and not refer to him in any way, shape or form. He stresses this quite a lot. He's <laughs> pretty much a coward. He's like, yeah, yeah, pretty much yeah. a coward. He's like, I don't want him to do my niece and nephew. Like, I don't want him to do. He stresses that so much. I was expecting him to like, you know, shout from the window, right, right, remember, <laughs> not here, not me. Uh, the... The woman Miss Giddens, is it? The, the woman's name? You know, Miss Giddens, when she I'm goes... No, I didn't, I can't remember, but... I, I want to say it's Miss Giddens anyway, but... You know, when she goes to meet the children, she's she's very taken with them, you know, she comes to... She gets along with the little girl particularly very well, but, you know, there's... Uh, when she gets there at first, the little boy is still away at school, and it turns out that he's been expelled for doing something that, you know, not quite sure what it is he's done. And, you know, when he comes and joins them, he seems like this picture of innocence and light, and, you know, she, she can't accept that this would be the boy that would be expelled from school for doing something nasty. And it starts to transpire that something in particular has happened with the previous governess that was allocated to the, the children who died in mysterious circumstances. And the gardener. And the gardener, of course, yes. And there is, it's very much implied that one of the children still has a link with the gardener in particular, and again, I don't know if I can really say much. No, I think you can. That, that, that well, aye, that's that's a good summary, yeah. Alan. But I think you can say that it is a supernatural sort of psychological horror, and it does have. Yeah. Well, you already said that that there may be a there may be a connection with the governess and basically her lover, mm -hmm. who's a gardener uh, from beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. And the film is, is based on the, the novella Turn Up the Screw, which mm. is one of the most famous ghosts. In fact, many people say it's the ghost story. If you're going to read a ghost story, mm. that's the ghost story right by Henry James. Hey, to write, to read even. If you're going to write a ghost story, <laughs> so, steal, that one, steal yeah. his ideas. Um, and yeah, so, but but I think there is, there's, there's more of the tale to be told, but mm. the best stopping there before ruining it for anyone. So, I can already know, and this is what yeah, I said. Yeah, this, this is the thing because you know, I, I just did not engage with this film. No. I don't know quite why exactly, but for some reason, I just felt it tried my patience as much as anything. <laughs> because I, mean, I think, I think you know, you get the feeling from pretty much square one that something is not quite right, you know. But the film kind of, I felt it just sort of dragged it out, you know. Mm. I don't know if maybe partly why I feel that uh, I've been here before in many ways is that there's a later film with Nicole Kidman called The Others, which while it's not, you know, based explicitly on, I don't think it's based explicitly on the story. No, but, but it's, it's pretty much, it's very a, re similar, it's pretty yeah. much a, a, a retelling where they try to twist mm. it around. Yeah, yeah. But The Others very much is, it is a very different sitting thing, yeah. and no, but it is very much sitting in Turn of the Screw, you yeah, know, that, that yeah. story, I mean, I the think setting and all that. and. The, the the freakish thing is that if you look it up on if you look up the Innocence on IMDb the the promo shot of Deborah Kerr I could have mistaken it from Nicole Kidman yeah. and the Innocence the similarities that I mean they're obviously playing to that but I, in a way I just felt that, like having seen the others I kind of felt pretty much that I, I had a reasonable grasp of what was going to happen in the film and I just it, it just didn't grab me that's, that's find, all I can say I find that interesting though because while it borrows heavily from Turn of the mm. Screw and from the Innocence. You know, the story is very different mm. in terms of, I mean, you have the two children and you have the governess mm. and the others you have the two children and the mother mm. and you also have the housekeeper. There's a, there's a housekeeper character that sort of um, acts as a kind of neutral almost to yeah, to, yeah. to what's going well, that's, on. That's a good way to describe her, yeah. I don't know, like, for me personally, I think The Innocence is one of the greatest mm. horror films ever made. Um... 
it is completely psychological. Mm. What is it's also to me one of the most disturbing films ever made. Mm. It, it it really it it gave me a chill. I think about that film mm. and it gives me a chill. You know, like a, 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 it really does frighten me mm. because there is an a, a dark dark undertone in the film of sexual mm. abuse mm. and it's never overtly spoken of but there are some things that happen in the film which make you very uncomfortable mm. because there are things that happen between an adult woman and a young child and there's the idea of has something else been happening beforehand mm. were they abused by you know the, yeah, the pre yeah. previous people that were in that house you know, you, you, and and then there's the whole thing is basically the crux of the matter is is the governess going mad mm. is she obsessing over the innocence of these mm. children mm. and she feels like she's trying to save them from some malevolent force but is she actually dragging them down mm. with her into into madness yeah, I mean, I can, I can get where you come from. I mean, I can see how you, you could, you know, enjoy this film if you engaged with that part of it. So I just, just laughed just and find <laughs> that your retort started with a part. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. That, that, was not, that was not the most dignified way to start. That's why I you, That was uh, just an unfortunate coincidence, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I could understand what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I can understand. Did you get that from him? Well, that's the thing. That's something. Yeah, that no, I, I, got from. I, did, I did could you, see. Did I can see where it comes from. Yeah, but, but did you think of that when you were watching it? Did you feel like there was this um, idea of sexual abuse in the film? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I think in a way, coming to this film now, you know, where perhaps like sort of abuse of that nature is a lot more widely spoken of like in the news and the media and that sort of thing I think it's I think it's actually difficult to see this film without seeing that dimension to mm. it or at least I found that you know watching the film now it was difficult not to, to read the time that it must have been really it's, shocking yeah yeah I think that I mean I would certainly agree with you there I mean, what about the final shot though well I mean the fi one of the things I would I would say is that I did feel it was extremely well shot. I mean, I thought the cinematography of the film was excellent. I mean, oh, I, I have no qualms with that. The, the thing is, I can understand watching it and feeling that, that you said it tried your patience, so mm. it felt like it was dragging. And Did you feel it was kind of like, shows a ghost? Well, was I, it, like I, that it wasn't even so much that. I, I don't know what it was. I just, I don't know whether it's just, I find, I tend to find... I find children in movies profoundly annoying, and I wish there was less of this sort of thing. But I don't know. It's uh, I, I don't know why. I just I don't know whether it was that I didn't. I, I don't want to say I didn't care about the characters, but I just I, I didn't engage with them somehow. And, and I don't know whether it was. I felt like the the way they they reinforce it so much at the start, the way the uncle keeps saying, "Now don't bother me with this." I thought there was going to be some sort of callback to that. And no, it, see, it I, really see, I see, I just came down to me is that just being someone who was. I mean, mm. it's basically said he's he likes to party, you know. That's that's it. He likes to party. He's the type of guy who wants to do, do you think that sleep around well, and drink, and he doesn't want to. Mm. At the same time, he doesn't want to expose them to mm. that. But the other time, he's too selfish mm. to give that up for them. So he's kind of uh. like he he's really a, appeasing his own conscience mm. by mm. getting the gov bringing the governess in, mm. get you know paying for that, giving them a a, a lovely mm. house to. I actually them. thought that was quite interesting in itself, you know, in a way I would have liked if the film had maybe pursued that a little bit more, I mean, I don't know, maybe that's... Well, at every turn, there's a different interpretation mm. can be taken in this film, and that's mm. why, one of the reasons I love it, I mean, you, you can think, has the has this uncle seen something else, mm -hmm. has he seen that there's an evil there, I mean, um, I think as well there's a, there's a scene where you see... You do actually, when I'm saying show as a ghost, you do see things, oh, but know, the question right. is, are you seeing it from the point of view of the governess, mm. and is it just all in her mind? And there's a scene where you see the previous governess, uh, mm. and they've shot her out of focus. Mm. And I, I, I mean, it, 
when you look at it now because they've made versions of the women in black mm. you look at it and you think well the women in black but to me it's it's absolutely chilling and mm. the the end as well was just so full of it's so full of hysteria you know like mm. it's so um it's just so dripping with i think bizarre sexual tension mm. and also, just this, there's this, this climax which is just unbelievably brutal in a lot of ways. Mm. But perhaps it's just that you know, bizarre sexual te uh, tension followed by a brutal climax <laughs> is a, like a pretty typical Friday night uh, for me. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah. My point is, there are a lot of young children in my family, mm. and I think maybe because of that. Mm. It affected well, me. I, I can understand that. You know, I mean, you know, the maybe, idea of yeah, someone yeah. looking after, wh whether you, you look on it as being the governess, previous governess, mm. whether you look on it as being the current governess, mm. the idea of someone that is, should be looking after the yeah. children and they're descending into this sort of mm. vile place. Um, and it's, it's also the idea of abuse when you look at it from the point of view that is it the, is it the current governess that's mm. actually abusing them? Mm. When you look at it from that perspective, it's an interesting take because it sort of shows abuse as a form of madness, mm. which is interesting. A lot yeah. of people won't be comfortable with that because mm. a lot of people like to say that abusers are evil mm. and that's it. But mm. it's, it's interesting to look at it and see it as, as, uh, as something which is perhaps in some way out of their control. Mm. Mm. And I will admit, the boy is annoying as hell. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Never so got. that may have been, that may have been yeah. part of the problem. But Expel the whole shit right now. It's meant to be annoying, you know, yeah. I think, as well. Ah, you know, no. Okay. Anyway. Uh, can I actually ask you one other thing? As well? Oh, are we still okay? Can I think. actually ask you one other thing as well? Have you ever seen Jason King? Jason King? Who's Jason it's, King? There was a series in the late 60s and the early 1970s, one of these sort of psych <laughs> vaguely psychedelic detective adventurer type things called... Well, originally it was a Department S and there was a character in it called Jason King who later got his own series and he was played by Peter Wingard. And whenever I see Peter Wingard, I can't unsee Jason King. And I think that's, you know, partly threw me a little bit. Who did Peter Wingard play in this? Uh, Peter Wingard is the gardener. The gardener, all oh, right. Oh well, see, that would take it away because I mm. think that he's meant to be really frightening. See, well, that's the thing because uh, Jason King was a ridiculous dandy. You know, he he had like massive <laughs> '60s mop top, uh, you know, a huge gaucho moustache and a cravat. So this character that's supposed to be really frightening. And I just ah, oh, it's Jason King. Hey. Well, there you go. <laughs> see you all next week. <laughs> all right. Well, that's uh, that's uh, the innocence which. Mm. I would highly recommend, Alan wouldn't, sometimes that happens, yeah. but we're still friends. Right. Let's move on to the next film. This, <laughs> yeah, could there ever be a, a, a deeper contrast, I think, than um, what the film that I gave Mike this week, which is Golgo 13, The Professional, the manliest man among manly men. Yes. If, if the... It disappoints me only that in none of the live action versions of Golgo has he ever been played by Chuck Norris. There so are live action versions? Yeah. Are there? There's two. Yeah. Why haven't I seen this? Um, there's one, uh, Golgo was played by Ken Takakura, who may actually have been the original inspiration for Golgo, and the later one was played by Sonny Chiba, a martial arts actor of some note. Yes, so Alan gave me Golgo 13 The Professional, which is a film that I've wanted to watch for a long time because... I won't shut up about <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. And you show you show me different clips from mm -hmm. it, and also you've done like drawings and things like that from mm -hmm. it as well. So it's something that that it is one of the films that I've been really really interested mm -hmm. in. So Golgo Thirteen essentially follows a an assassin, and the film opens up where you're seeing a a powerful sort of oil baron, mm -hmm. is that what it is? Um, who is about to give over all of his. Um, all of his empire to his son in a public ceremony and Golgo assassinates the son uh, which really puts you in a footing right from the beginning which is that I like the hero you know, he, he, he basically kills this man's son and uh, the film sort of progresses from there where Golgo ends up um, doing a number of high profile hits and the, the oil barn basically hires people to try and take Golgo out because he blames him for obviously killing his son 
And uh, along the way, we get to see Goggles being a total sort of James Bond type character where he's got, you know, the cars and the gadgets and the, 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 the guns, one facial expression. the guns and ridiculous number of women who are naked um, <laughs> along the way and that's, that's really kind of essentially the story. There is also um, a little bit of a fantastic element to it where you've got characters who, there are there's some characters that come in that have been sort of genetically enhanced, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and you get the feeling that Goggle is like the best of the best, but are these people going to be able to yeah. take him down? So that's essentially the story, there's, there's not, it's not like a phenomenal plot or anything like that, really it's in... It, it's pulp. Yeah, it's, it's really in the, the action, and first of all, right off the bat, the animation is some of the best animation I've seen in an anime film, I think mm. I really love the style of it. Um, and that computer's making strange noises again. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really loved the, the, the animation. I thought it was fantastic. Loved the character designs. Uh, it really, you know, about half an hour in, <laughs> I was kind of like, I don't know if I like this because it's total macho bullshit. Mm. You know what I mean? It's mm. like, it's like James Bond. Yeah, it's, it's that taken to his logical extreme. James, yeah. James Bond squared is, should <laughs> That's be a good the right. review. That, that of, should be the box quote. Actually. Yeah, of, of Goggle 13. <laughs> uh, but as the film progressed, you know, you start getting blown away by the, the action set pieces and mm. things like that. And, you know, they really are fantastic. Mm, mm, and no, he's definitely. constantly fighting these, like, different mercenaries that are all out to try and, try and kill him, try and assassinate him. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the hitman, someone's hired a hit on the hitman type of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was interesting, though, that there's like really early CG in this film. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you showed me this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but what's funny is that when you showed it me before, I was kind of like... Oh, that will look really, really out of place. Mm. But see, when I was watching the film, it, it's, it was okay. Yeah, I didn't it's think right. it doesn't bother me all that you know, much. Yeah, and it's, it's really impressive because when was this? This was 83, yeah. yeah. This is very early CGI. So, yeah. really, this is a contemporary of The Last Starfighter mm. where mm. there was like a lot of, of CG used in that as well. And you have to say, it's, it's yeah, pretty, it's you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that was capable, you know, capable mm. of doing that in 1983. Um, Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I I love the way they wrap the story up uh, in the end. I don't want to ruin it for anyone that hasn't mm. seen it, but there, but there is a little bit that sort of helps you resolve mm. who Gogo is and whether he is just this <laughs> heartless bastard or not. Um, and I loved as well. There's a, there's a fight scene in an, in an elevator. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's That's, basically when your yeah. your two main, you know, you Gogo goes head to head with one of the main assassins mm, and it's and you are kind of like shit goggles like really yeah, against it like, like you yeah. lose here whereas for the rest of the film it's like it's almost like so that's the type of that's the only thing I, mm. I didn't entirely like is he's almost superhuman well, I was about, he's, he's a little bit like superman in a way yeah. you know, he's got that kind of quality about well, it like yeah. he's just always getting out of everything yeah. and it's as if he doesn't even break a sweat mm. and then all of a sudden he's in this scene where he's mm. getting blood pouring out of him yeah. and he's you know you're kind of like Jesus, and you know he's got more in front of him as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but and some of the designs for the assassins were it's quite freaky. It, it, well, one of them uh, in particular is really freaky. The one that's the one, of them's, one of them's like a like sort of mixed gender. Oh yeah, uh, do you mean the twins? Oh. The ah uh, yeah yeah no I know what you mean because uh, with the masks and everything yeah, yeah they they are pretty freaky yeah. Uh, a bit but snake. Who yeah. is the not snake from Metal Gear? Yeah, or or snake whisking. Yeah, uh, snake is the the sort of well through most of the film he's the sort of main assassin that mm. they've hired, and he's just a scumbag. Yeah. So, I mean, you really that's the mark of a good villain when you uh, really want to see them get their head kicked in. Cause this right. is a guy that like rapes women, and mm. the sex is really like quite. Uh, Graphic. Yeah, it's quite graphic. They, they don't really hold back in mm, terms of it. No. It's ki it is kind of bullshit stuff where like goggles constantly. And there's some really funny things in it though, where goggles oh, like, just use. Some of the, it's the, the facial expression uh, is the exact same. <laughs> and he's got this beautiful woman on, on top of yeah, him. Yeah. And he's just like. You know, really yeah, really there funny. is a bit of that. It's, um, 
Well, funnily enough, that's the one thing that I think this this film does lack a little bit. In that, if you read the the Golgo Thirteen, the manga, there's so much of it is just is so unbelievably poor faced and it's completely absurd. And I think there's a that is slightly missing from the film because I think my did they make a joke of it? You mean it's, so? Well, it's not openly made a joke, but it's so, it's such a, so much of it is just so ridiculous. You can't help but take it. You know, it is a little bit silly. It's like yeah. you know. The psychic uh, assassin from Russia, or you know, the my favorite one actually is the one where it turns out that uh, Gogo owes Nelson Mandela a favor, and it's like, so he knocks off some new Nazis for, for Nelson Mandela. That really? is my favorite that's one of the manga. <laughs> that's amazing. That, because that's that's the thing, and I think the film kind of lacks a little bit of that because the film is very, very well, you know, it, try, it takes itself very, very seriously, and I think they really, they really made this one exceptionally grim. I think that. The first, th the first time I actually saw this film, I didn't really like it, and I think the um, the thing that put me off is it is an extremely grim film. I mean, it's it's a film where really, uh, you know, anyone who's remotely likable will end up dead or you know worse in some cases. And you spend the whole time, the whole film, really not sure that you even like God. Well, that's. I mean, I think you might have you know when you're saying that they build Snake up to be such an incredibly deplorable villain that might be why so that in a way you know you you start to view Golgo as being kind of slightly lesser evil you know you want to see him deal out what is coming to these people what the you know they get their just yeah. deserves in a way um, but yeah it actually took me a, a few years afterwards when I started thinking about like just uh, individual sections of this film like the fight scenes are really really well animated I, I mean yeah. Uh, this was directed by Samu Dezaki, who also did spa the, f the Space Adventure Cobra film that we spoke of a while ago. And, uh, you know, the, the, he was such a talented director of fight scenes, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, the level of, not only that, the level of experimentation that he is doing in this film, I think in many ways he's still making Cobra a little bit, because there's some quite yeah. psychedelic visuals. That, the, the that's the thing that I was going to say, is that although Cobra's maybe get more in common with, like, sort of Lupin, yeah. you know, in mm. terms of, like, his sort of quirky, wisecracking yeah. nature, there's the sort of superhero aspect of it, you know, yeah. the... the, the yeah. um, in some places infallible or just so skillful mm. that that kind of reminded me of of, of that as well and mm. Gogo, you know even though the characters are like you say Gogo's very very sort of dry yeah um, and yeah. Uh, cobra's like sort of your witty ah, he's working wise wise cracking, cracking yeah. sort of guy but no i really really enjoyed it i thought it thought it was really great i, mean, I was i was glad to say because a lot of people really don't like this film i mean i think that you get you know to just to, to some extent it also happens i think with the fist of the north star and that you get people that don't like anime but they you know they will like stuff like fist of the north star and i think particularly with gogo you get people that will like gogo but nothing else is kind of of anime in a way because i think this is very very different i mean you get even the sequel film that they made to this doesn't really look like this film does. You know, you get very little else that looks or acts like this film does. That's I mean, a shame because well, it I, looks I thought great. so as well. I, I know that a lot of the critics don't actually, or some of them certainly don't really go for this film. I mean, to some extent, I think that might be that the cut of it that was available in the UK was badly edited, the original VHS version, possibly. But uh, as well as that, I think they they feel that this is. A film made in Japan to to appeal to Western audiences. That this isn't maybe something that was kind of made indigenously, but I mean, at the same time, I just think it's a really good film. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's it's a strange one because it, it seems to be kind of aping the sort of Watergate kind of era, really grim conspiracy thrillers mm -hmm. from the early seventies, the stuff that was over ten years before this, like uh, Three Days of the Condor and um, The Parallax View. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's just that they feel that it's a film kind of out of its time, maybe, but it's, it's, it's an I think it's it holds, up, experience, holds yeah. up really well, to be honest. It, it's, I mean, I think because it's so close to something like James Bond that mm, you're, mm. you kind of take to it, you know, that way. Mm. But it took, like, I was sort of enjoying the set pieces and all that, but mm. it really took about halfway through the film um, and, until I started going... I'm actually uh, starting to root a bit for the mm. yeah, and also starting to root for the mm. the the main character. Now mm. I knew right from the start that the animation was was really great, and mm. like I say, the use of early CG is really interesting. Mm. You know, felt there was a bit of stop motion as well. Yeah, the oh, I, they, that's the thing as well. The opening <laughs> credits are mental. 
But it's, it, it's like it is a Bond opening. Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's like a Bond opening made by Hammer Horror. And there's a CG gun, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of CG in that as well. It's, uh, that, that was missing for many years. That was one of the things that was taken out from the, the early cuts of this film and the, like, that were available in English were missing that opening. But uh, What did they have in its place? Um, nothing. Strangely, it just went straight. You know that bit where they show like the, the dossier with Gogo's photo on it? That was the, the opening. Really? Right? Yeah. Jeez. What a waste. I know, but it's... The opening's great. It's, it's, yeah. it's got nothing to do with the film. Oh, it's it's absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with the film. But the but it's it's just totally like, yeah. here's a Bond opening <laughs> with skulls and, and, and bullets. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know if maybe it's kind of playing to the mythos of you, because I think, in a way, they, they kind of... Um, invite this uh, slightly reading of Gogo that he's a bit of an antichrist figure, that, you know, because mm. he's got this logo that's the, the skeleton with the crown of thorns, the kind of uh, quite an image of Christ unrisen, if you like, which I think gives it maybe a slight supernatural kind of quality to it. That he is this sort of, uh, I mean, as you say, you just picked up earlier, there's a slightly fantastical element to it, and you know, maybe it's playing into that a little bit. Mm. No, that's, I, I hadn't really thought of that, but like, uh, I just think it's fun. <laughs> Much, just yeah. fun yeah. That's, I mean it's, it's kind of although one thing I would say is that, that um, it's kind of almost feels like the sort of Bourne thing you know like the Bourne movies oh right yeah because uh, like you kind of like you know what's his background you know you oh yeah of, right enough why is he such a good mysterious. assassin yeah. is, does he have some sort of you know well, genetic yeah. enhancement or so uh, you, you, I think you're invited to read into it what you yeah. want to read into it in a way. I just think it'd be interesting to see mm. an exploration of his past. But yeah. so um, yeah, that that's the innocence and Goggle Thirteen, the professional. The innocence is maybe not ideal for people who don't like something that's the sort of slow burner mm. psychological thriller. But it's I really really like it. I think it's got a lot to it. Definitely go and watch it and let us know what you think. Yeah, do you think yeah. I, I was right or do you think Alan was right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and Goggle 13 The Professional, we're both in agreement about that yeah. film. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's, pretty it's awesome. fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. And it's just a total riot, you know, you just put it on. It's like, <laughs> put it on some night, sit with a couple of beers, you'll enjoy it. It's total <laughs> macho bullshit, but you'll enjoy it. Not really what I don't, I wouldn't imagine a lot of women would enjoy that. I'm not being sexist, but yeah, I have been sexist. I, I, when someone I, says I'm not being sexist, normally you think, yeah, yeah, yeah you probably well, are. That, that's a good point. You know, if if you'd like to, if if you're a woman and you've watched Gogo Thirteen, let us know what you think about that. Yeah. That would that would genuinely yeah, be interesting. Because it, I just mean because it is, it is mm. just total match. Well, they, 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 they often, some people probably like that. They they often say that uh, Gogo has very few female fans. So yeah, I mean, you know, if you There's a lot of female fans in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Number of breasts, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, if that's you, not. That's not what I call women. I don't call women breasts. I don't say the number of breasts he hooks up with. Like, genuinely, like, just every woman he, he meets, you see naked at some point. Yeah, no, I would like to refute that, but yeah, I think that is actually accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be back next time. We don't know. What do we know what we're doing? Uh, not sure that we do, but it might involve a trip into space. And as it always does. So, we'll be back next time and let us know your thoughts. Be sure to, to send us a postcard uh, marked uh, I'm a female Golgo 13 fan and send it to the usual address. And Mike is a dick. <laughs> You there just you say that that would, that would make sense so we'll see you next time guys remember leave comments down below and that's all for now I'm dragging this out let's just fine. let's just cut to the freeze frame Alan uh, I moved oh, I you ruined it I you know, really spoiled it uh, how long do you stay like this I don't know there's no one to touch the camera or the light off. The terrapin's still moving as well. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>